Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. Starting us off, the celebration of Purim is Sunday, March 8th. The Jewish festival commemorates the day Esther, Queen of Persia, saved the Jewish people from execution by an advisor to the Persian king. Purim is celebrated with foods that are hat-shaped or triangles. Here to tell us more and show us how to make the sweet and savory treats is Josh Grunig from Zilberstein's Bakery and Deli in Seattle. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for tell having us me. a little bit about Purim. Uh, so Purim is uh, really a celebration of Jewish survival, um, as, as you talked about. Uh, in the Book of Esther, they talk about um, how basically Queen Esther saved the Jewish people in ancient Persia. Um, and so there was kind of an evil uh, kind of, uh, uh, he was the prime minister named Haman, uh, and he wore these triangle-shaped hats. Mm -hmm. And so now... In celebration of the Jewish survival, we make these triangle-shaped hats. A lot of people wear costumes. Right. Um, it's it's a big, huge celebration, and so. And as usual, food is involved. Always, as it always. should be. Yes. So, what are we making today? Uh, so today we're we're going to make four different kinds of uh, hamantashen. So I'm going to show you how to assemble some. Um, so these have already been rolled out. Okay. Uh, this is our hamantashen dough. It's got sour cream, cream cheese, butter, Yum. and some of our. Um, uh, all-purpose flour. Okay. So what we're going to do is just we're going to start with our apricot jam. Mm -hmm. We're going to do about a teaspoon and a half. We're going to put that in and then we're going to use just a little bit of egg, a little tiny bit of egg, and we're just, just going to right around the edges there. Make it stick. And then um, I'll do one. I'll show you one then you can do one as well. Okay. So I'm going to put you to work while we're I would love while to. we're on TV here. Show me what. I'm going to get the other side of this. Oh, there maybe. you go. So I usually start by just pinching one end, mm -hmm. and then I'll bring the other end in, and I'll pinch it like that. Um, I do want them kind of open face a little bit, like this guy. How do you do? That's a beautiful hamtashen right All there. All right. So I'm going to put these back in the fridge. Okay. Uh, we can go ahead and st stick these on the sheet pan while we're working here. Um, we so this, uh, and then we also have some marionberry jam, Ooh, some of our house-made marionberry here. So I'm going to set you up with that. All Let's go ahead and make some of those. All right. While what are you doing over there? So uh, while you're working on that, I'm going to just dice up uh, some of these fresh leeks um, and caramelize these. Ooh, that sounds good. Just with a little bit of olive oil on low heat. Um, so some I, are sweet, like I'm making, and some are savory, like what savory. you're preparing. Exactly. And so our, on our website, we posted the recipe for the hamantashen dough oh, that good. we make. Good, and good. you can make a savory dough by just leaving out the sugar. And that, so, the, so the dough is the same. Uh, the recipe that we have posted is with sugar. And you can go ahead and make that without sugar if you want to make a savory one. Um, so we're going to make a vegetarian one uh, with caramelized garbanzo beans, leeks, mm. and a little bit of cumin. That sounds good. And then we're also going to make a little bit of our Reuben hamantashen. That sounds really good. It's, it's really delicious. That's what we've got right That's over here, That's what we've here, got right? set up right here, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll make one of those, and then you can make a few as well. Okay. I'm squeezing away over here. It's hard to talk and cook at the same time, isn't it? And it's easy to it's easy to uh, overfill them, and th that amount of filling is really good. As as we've found, um, if you make a little bit too many, you put a little bit too much filling in there, you're going to yeah. get uh, they all spill out, and so. I'm I'm really careful about that because I do tend to overstuff everything, dumplings and whatnot, and then they're. They kind of mess. blow out. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot less than you think it is to, That's right. to stuff them in there. All right, so your leeks are, are going to take so, how long? Uh, you know, I like to cook these for over an hour at just really, really low heat on, on like a number one or number two, mm -hmm. um, similar to how you would caramelize onions. Oh, okay. So they just take a long time. I just leave them on the stove and um, while I'm cooking other things, and I kind of work on that. Um, if, if you're not in... Uh, if you are in a bit more of a hurry, you can always um, do that, you know, maybe over half an hour at kind of medium heat, but you just have to watch it very carefully. Okay. How long do these take to cook? So you're going to want to bake these at about 400 degrees for um, about 20 minutes, depending on the oven. So I would say between, f um, 
I would say between 15 and 20 minutes total. Okay. Um, if you, in your home oven, you want to bake them about eight minutes, rotate them, bake them another eight. What you're looking for is just a really nice, uh, a really nice bottom, um, a really nice toasted bottom on there. The sides are going to get a little dark, um, but not too much. Yeah, those look great. Okay, thank you. Awesome. I'm putting them on the sheet down here so nothing goes to waste. So now that you've done a few of those, <laughs> yeah, right. don't waste them. That's right. Mm -mm. Um, so now we're going to use, uh, so this uh, Reuben croissant, and this is very similar, I'm sorry, the Reuben hamantash in here. These are very similar to the uh, the Reubens that we make at, a, at our deli here, at, which is by far our most popular item that we sell. It's my the favorite. Reuben. So my very favorite. This is a little bit of our Reuben dressing. This is, okay. uh, is a little bit of mayo, a lot of horseradish, a little bit of ketchup. Okay. And a little bit of shallots. Um, then I'm going to use a little bit of our pastrami. Just a little pinch of that. This is some uh, of our local, locally made organic sauerkraut by Firefly Kitchens. That looks so good. So again, just a little pinch of everything there. What's the little disc over the, there? That is a little disc of cheese. Oh. And so if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna have a Reuben, you gotta have melted cheese. It's it's absolutely required. And so, so we're gonna put it on top. We're gonna put that right on it? top. Yay. That's right. And so then you just put a little disc on there, and you are good to go. <laughs> okay, Look I'm gonna try my hand yeah. at this. Um, so I've got pinch. my leeks cooking, mm -hmm. and now I'm gonna start rolling out my dough and show you how to do that as well. And so, again, we put the recipe up, right? So we've got the recipe up. That a so, try. Yeah, so you basically, you mix your dough. You just have to let it sit overnight. I gotta find my dough. There it is. <laughs> that will help. We hit it from So me. I made this dough yesterday, um, and I let it rest overnight. Um, and it's kind of, it's similar to a uh, pie dough and a shortbread. They're kind of very similar, mm -hmm. um, which is nice because after you roll this out and you cut it, you can actually re reuse the dough again, which is a really, really nice thing to do. That instead sounds of, delish. Um, so How'd I do? Looking okay hey, over That's here? beautiful right there. All right. Do you, do you have a day job? Because I can hire you. I, you as know, a, I'm as a cook. free in the evenings. Yeah, you're free in the evenings. And we, I, I'd be happy to come okay. and help cook. Well, we are going to be making quite a bit of home tosh in this week. So, <laughs> so if, you, if, you, if you're free, Maybe I'm seasonal. you're welcome to come with us. <laughs> so I've got my sill pad here, and I'm just rolling this out. Um, if you don't have a sill pad at home, you can definitely use wax paper. Um, you don't really need a lot, you don't really need to use flour, you just need to have this between a surface. So mo most people have wax paper at home. Um, and if you have a sill pad, you can use a half sheet. Um, the recipe that we have makes a, a piece of dough about this size, so it's about a, a one pound piece of dough. Now as you're doing that, tell me a little bit about the deli. What was kind of missing in the community that you thought you wanted to fill? <clears throat> well, fill. so when I when I moved to Seattle, um, and I and I think this is the same uh, in the Bay Area where I'm from too, where you know there's um, you just want to have a bakery on every corner, and you <laughs> want to have that place where the community comes together. Yes. And you go in, and you know, coffee shops kind of fill that need sometimes, um, but. But you can't get a Reuben there. You can't get a Reuben, and I was uh, really inspired. Uh, by a place in Michigan called Zingerman's and they are a Jewish deli and instead of growing and opening up 10 different delis they opened up a bakery and then they opened up a creamery and so they Ooh. they grew their business uh, horizontally and they made a bunch of businesses that were very complimentary and the foundation kind of the cornerstone of the business was the deli that really was was that the place in Ann Arbor. Sense. Tell me quickly about the breads over here, because I don't want to leave anything oh, out. Oh, absolutely. Um, so my background's really in baking. Uh, I've spent most of my career making bread um, and have been a pretty serious cook as well. Um, and I really, uh, uh, it was about four years ago, and I was like, I, I would like to go have a bagel. <laughs> and I was like, there's nowhere to get a bagel in Seattle. And I was like, well, I suppose I could make some. So I took a trip to New York, I took some bagel classes, and I got really interested. Um, and that was kind of what sparked the idea of the Jewish Deli. So um, we decided to remodel our space in North Seattle. We were uh, known as Standard Bakery before, and we mostly specialized in croissants and sourdough. 
and decided to remodel. And so now we're at Jewish Deli and Bakery. And that's, it's just beautiful. Breads, Thank all you. kinds of things that are ready to go whenever you want to. Thanks so much for helping us. I'm going to bring our pan out here so we don't forget to oh, yeah, absolutely. pop all these in the oven because we are in business here. I think we need one more. I'll do that in a commercial oh, yeah. break. Zilbersteins will be celebrating Purim on Sunday, March 8th with food and music for the family. We've posted details on our website. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You're working hard.